All right, whether you've been using the DJ Pro AI app for a while or you're brand new to the app, here are some settings to change that will make your experience that much better. In order to get to your most of your settings, you're gonna press this middle button up here. And then now you're gonna go down right under where it says one deck mode and there's a settings icon. We're gonna click that one. And now we are in our main settings. So the first one that we're gonna to wanna to do is go to is go to general. So in general, when you first download the app, it's going to have this setting, which is start playback. So as soon as you load up a track, it's going to start playing immediately. And if you're trying to mix and trying to get your songs ready, this could be super annoying. So to change that, we're just gonna to go to settings and then general, change it, start playbacks off. Now, when we load up this track, we get to start it when we decide to start it, not just automatically. So definitely change that. Next, we are going to go back to general, and then we are going to do the third one down, and this is protect active deck. This will make sure that you don't accidentally change the wrong song. It'll give you an extra warning before you load a song onto a deck if that deck is already playing. So definitely wanna keep this on. It'll keep you from making any really bad mistakes. Next, we're gonna go down over here, which is tempo slider. I think it starts us on either eight or 10%. So that means you can only change the BPM 10% or 8%. So if the BPM is 100, you could only go to 108 or you could only go minus eight. I think uh, nowadays DJs like to do bigger BPM transitions. So I would suggest leaving the range right here, uh, somewhere around in the middle. I usually do 25%. So a good rule of thumb, just keep it at the 25%. Next, we're gonna go down here, start time and stop time. It might have it at like 0.3 seconds to start, 0.3 seconds to stop. That's how long it takes the song to speed up to the BPM. So let me give you an example if it's at one second. And then you start it. It slowly speeds up to the BPM. And then also the same thing if you have the stop time really high. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do the stop time now at four seconds. And it slows down. Only use this setting if you plan on doing a large BPM to a small BPM. It's a really cool trick for a large BPM transition. But if you're not doing any, if you're not doing that specific transition, then I rec recommend keeping these both to zero, especially if you're a new DJ and you're used to when you press play on things, it plays. And when you press pause, it just stops instead of having to get used to it speeding up and slowing down. So just keep those at zero and it'll make your life a lot easier. Next, we're gonna go, um, this is not in the settings, but we're gonna go in the pro mode. In pro mode, we have this really cool waveform view of both of our waveforms. And then now if you press this secret hidden drop down button, which is right by where it says one or by it says two, there's a little arrow here. We drop that down. And if you're not already in dark mode, look, this is what it's like if you don't have this setting ticked. So you, it's like the same color as the background, but if you put it on dark mode, it makes it so much easier to see your waveforms. I don't know why this isn't just the standard setting, but this will make it so much easier for you guys to see your waveform, especially if you're DJing during the day or someplace where there's a lot of light. Now we're going back to our settings. Sound settings. Make sure this one is ticked on. This is audio limiter. This will make sure you don't destroy your, your speakers or anyone else's speakers when you DJ. It'll automatically limit the volume so that you don't redline. And then auto gain. If you've been using this app for a while and you're used to using other DJ software, this app is designed for you not to be adjusting the game. Gain, although you can with these small buttons, with these small sliders over here, they're kind of hard to use. And a lot of the controllers that are made specifically for this app will not even have gain knobs. So just use the auto gain feature. It works really well. And then you don't have to worry about adjusting the gain and both of your tracks will be similar volumes. Another great setting to have on is down here, which is pre-queuing. This will automatically put the headphones uh, 
the, the headphone output on a deck that you are not using. So if you, the crossfader is all the way to the right, then the headphones will be on the left. If the crossfader is all the way to the left, the headphones will be on the right. This could save you an extra button on small controllers like that Hercules Control Mix or the Newmark DJ to go through touch because you don't need to switch your headphones because it does it automatically. I think it's a great setting and everyone should use it. And now here in appearance, if we go down to appearance, our cue points, Definitely put these in the high contrast so you can see the different colors. Having different colored cue points will help you stay organized and prepared. So put it on high contrast. It just makes the colors look a little bit better. Now that I have that selected, you can see the difference. It's on high contrast and now low contrast. High contrast, low contrast. So high contrast, the whole button is the color. Low contrast, just the play button. I think it looks really cool to have the buttons in color. Job wheels, they gave us this in a new update. I recommend keeping it on extended. It'll probably keep start it in compact dark or compact light. These are good, but the extended ones give you a larger surface area, so it makes it easier for you to scratch. And now we're going to go down to MIDI devices. And then what we're going to want to do is put crossfader cutting mode on. This makes it so when you're using a controller, you just have to move the crossfader a tiny bit and then the actual crossfader will cut so instead of you blending it smoothly you could cut from one side to another this makes it easier to scratching and it just i find it an easier way to dj when you're using a controller check out this other video to learn more about dj pro ai for the ipad